Hi, YouTube. This is Mary again. This is going to be a kind of long video because uh, for me to connect all the dots and bring people up to speed, I have to tell this story. And I may have, I talked about it four years ago, I believe, when I talked about two entities sitting on my bed one night. But something happened before then, and I forgot to even connect the dots with this situation. So what I'm going to do is start uh, with this name of this lady. And no, before, this lady name is Layla. I never met her in real life. I met her as she was dying. In fact, she was in a coma. I, the first time I met her, she was dying. But her name was Layla. And I still didn't connect that name, Layla. But let me go to the first part of this. Layla. There was a time, probably 25 years ago, I was really getting into my meditation and was really doing it and just strange things were happening but I knew how to go to this sacred place and this term the guided meditation I was taking up metaphysical classes uh, in, in North Dallas and they were teaching us how to meet your spirit guides so they showed us how to do the meditation and the first time I did it, it didn't work like that. So this particular time, it did. And to reach this place, they told me I had to meditate, but I had to take myself to a low place in my mind. I had to go down. So I took myself to this place called Payne's Bottom. This is a place they took us when we would go down home in Sulphur Springs. And I had to be about eight years old. And they, they they drove off just the freeway and in between the lanes, you park your car and you're just walking. But all of a sudden you find an opening between the lanes and you start walking down this place. You, you wouldn't even know it's there, but it's called Payne's Bottom. So we started walking down here. My sister and I and my cousins, we were all little. And you're walking down, and all of a sudden, this was in the summertime, all of a sudden, it starts getting dark, but you're going down, down, and you could feel the temperature change. It gets so cool. This was in July. And you go down, and it's dark, cloudy, and when you get to a certain place, the sun is shining. I couldn't figure that out. But you look around, there's trees everywhere, and water, water, and the water's making curves and things, and you look in the distance, you see snakes, uh, they call them water moccasins, they were just swimming in the, in the lake, or whatever, a creek, whatever you want to call it. But this was a place, and they started fishing, and... So when I decided to do this meditation, I said, well, I'm going to take myself to Payne's Bottom because that is a, a, to me, that was the most miraculous place I've ever been. How are you going to be on the street and then all of a sudden you down in a hole? So I took myself to Payne's Bottom in the meditation. And as I got into the meditation, I went, I was at the place in Payne's Bottom looking at all the sights and the trees and just different things. And my eyes kind of, I don't know, got fixed on this tree. And out of all the trees, there was a lot of trees, but I got something about this tree and I looked at it and come to find out the tree was a cherry tree. This is in my meditation. It's in my mind, but it was a cherry tree. And I said, Oh, how can there be a cherry tree down here? And in the meditation, I walks over to the tree and touched the cherry and was pulling it. 
this tree, one of the branches on it turned into a hand and the hand popped me and I dropped the cherry and the tree started talking. It says, that's your problem. You don't have any patience. This tree, the cherries are not ready. You have to wait. I said, whoa. And that, when that tree started talking and popped my hand, I knew I was in the meditation deep enough. So I calmed myself down and relaxed because they had trained us to do that. Because when you realize you're in the meditation, you can startle yourself and bring yourself back to reality if you are just, if you panic. So I relaxed and they told us in the meditation to be sure when you see something unusual and if they talk to you, ask this entity what is their name and to ask them for a gift. So I asked the tree, I said, what is your name? The tree says, my name is Layla. And I said, oh, Layla, I remember that. And she, it was a woman, and the tree began talking, and, you know, she started admiring what I had on. And I had, in, in, I had when I started the meditation, I didn't know what I had on. She says, uh, you look pretty. And so I said, where is my gift? Because I knew I supposed to ask for a gift. I said, where is my gift? And she says, you need to be giving me a gift. I said, oh. So I said, what do you want? She said, I like those sandals that you have on. That's what I want. I looked down at my feet. I had on these beautiful sandals and and. I don't even know where it came from. They were beautiful with gold and diamonds, and they wrapped around your ankle. So I said, okay. And in the meditation, I took the sandals off, and I handed to handed to Layla, the tree. And then when I came, kind of, you know, I realized that my feet were not on the grass anymore. I was standing on sand. And the sand was kind of hot. And I said, oh, how did I get here? And that's when I began to panic a little bit. And Layla says, I want you to get ready and go. Just just start walking and you will find yourself back on land above. So I started walking, but I didn't get a gift. I started walking. And before I could get to daylight back above ground I saw a pond and in the pond there was a snake the snake was just swimming back and forth in a circle back and forth back and forth so I asked the snake I said why are you doing that the snake says I don't know I don't know what you want me to do you haven't told me and you keep changing your mind and I said really and then the snake said tell, said, tell me what you want. Because the snake would turn into a fish, and then it'd be a snake, and it'd be some other uh, marine animal. So I said, okay. Then Layla, I could still hear her voice, and she directed me as to how to get out of this meditation. So she said, keep walking. And I kept walking, and next thing I know, I was back to reality. So I said, ooh, I, you know, as I came out of meditation, I said, oh, this is me. Layla is my spiritual guide and the cherry tree and all of that. So keep that in mind, Layla. So let's go, oh, say, I would say five years from that experience with Layla. There was a time when my youngest son, he lived with me and he would come in on Friday night because he would always go out partying and drinking and stuff. But he'd always come back with uh, some food. You know, he got it at the club or he stopped by the chicken shack or something. But he always he would always do that and wake me up and say, Mama, taste this. And to me, that it, my daddy used to do that. And he would wake us up and want us to eat barbecue or chicken or something. So it was like, ooh, this reminded me of daddy. So this particular night, he was out, 
and uh, when I went to bed, I, I wasn't asleep. I said, let me get into bed. It's about time for him to come in. I'm just going to pretend that I'm asleep because I know he's going to wake me up. So I get into bed, and maybe 10 minutes, I heard, heard the, him unlock the door, and uh, he, he, I, I didn't because I had carpet on the floor. You couldn't hear him walking. But I knew he was coming to my bedroom. That's what he always does. So, uh, and I, what I did, I pulled a cover up over my head. I said, cause I, I, I just don't feel like waking up, even though I'm not asleep. So I'm gonna pretend to be asleep. So, I feel the covers gently pulling back, nudging, and and and, and I said, oh, he he's pulling the covers off my face. So I, I was getting ready to laugh. Because I felt him sit on the side of the bed next to me. But then, as he was pulling the covers, somebody else sat on the opposite side next to me. And I said, shit, it's two people sitting on my bed. I jumped up, threw the covers back, screamed, and wasn't anyone in my bed bedroom. Nobody. So I ran, I ran to the front door. I said, somebody is in here. I'm screaming and yelling. I opened the front door. My youngest son is standing outside holding a cell phone, and he has on his uh, boxer shorts. And he said, what's wrong with you, Mama? Why are you out here? I said, no, why are you out here? And he said, uh, I, I was already upstairs, but I came back out because I left my cell phone. I just came in here to get it, to my car to get it. And I said, somebody is in my bedroom. It's two people in there. He said, Mama, ain't nobody in there. I said, well, I, you came to my bedroom, and then but you brought somebody else with you. And he laughed. He said, Mama, no, you tripping. I said, Tony, somebody is in there. Don't don't play with me like that. So he knew I was serious. He tried to get me to calm down. He said, let's go in the room. So we went in my bedroom with nobody, nobody in the bedroom. And I explained to him what happened. Two people were sitting on my bed. And that was about maybe like 2 o'clock when he came in. So, oh, it was horrible. And it took maybe 4.30 for me to calm down. So I finally went on to sleep. At 7 o'clock that morning, the phone rings. And it's a friend of mine named Mary. We went through a drug rehab rehabilitation together but she wasn't successful with hers but she was on the phone and I was still sleepy but I said what's up Mary she said listen I got a, a client remember the one I was telling you about uh she's dying right now and I want you to come visit her before she leaves here I said Mary I I, I don't know this lady why you want me to come and visit her she said this lady prayed for you about two o'clock this morning i said why would she pray for me she said yeah that's and she her name is miss layla she prayed a fervent prayer for you she said uh she prayed for you because i asked her to i said i told her pray for my friend mary she said miss layla called my name out in prayer and this oh, was a beautiful prayer about two o'clock in the morning it's the same time that I felt these two entities sit on the bed with me. So, uh, while she's talking, like 7 o'clock in the morning, I begin to connect the dots. I say, maybe it's something to this, since they were praying for me about the same time when I had these entities come in my bedroom. So I told her, I said, well, Mary, let me get dressed, get some coffee, and i come on out there. This lady lived a pretty good piece. So anyway, I, I drive out there. I kind of woke up as I was driving. And but she Mary told me that Miss Layla was in a coma. So they knew she was dying. So I get to this house and it was this is a white lady and wealthy white lady too. And I get there and it's about four of her friends. They answered the door. I told them who I was. Uh, I was with the the uh CNA and I was a friend of her and she wanted me to come pray for Miss Layla before she leaves here. 
And they said, oh, please come on in, come on in. And I do not know what made me say this. The spirit just takes over your mind and your tongue and you'll say something. So I says, do you all mind if I give her Reiki? I'm a Reiki master and while she's dying, do you mind if I give this to her? Uh, you know, while she's dying. These white people, their mouth flew open. This man said, you won't believe this, but we were just talking about how nice it would be if somebody gave Layla Reiki while she's dying because she is a Reiki master. And my eyes got big. I said, oh, my God. I said, they said, please give her Reiki because God answered our prayers. So I went on back to her bedroom and she and B was in a coma. And I cleared my space and got the room cleared and, you know, did my breathing and tried to and get in tune with her spirit to see what she really wanted. And Ray, uh, Layla started talking to me and she was telling me what she wanted. She wanted her favorite things in the bed with her. And this was, this was audible, but not talk talk, but my spirit knew that's what she wanted. So... I did the Reiki, probably maybe a 20-minute 20, 20 Reiki session. And when it was over, I told her friends what she wanted. She wanted her favorite things in the bed with her. And she was going to get ready and would, would leave if, if she got all her favorite things. So did, they looked around the house and got her favorite things. And my friend Mary, she had on this big sun hat. And she was just, you know hyper dancing around the house with this lady's favorite hat on and i asked him i said is that everything all of her favorite things and one of her friends said oh that hat that the nurse aide is wearing that's her favorite hat so i told mary to give her put the hat in the bed so she did and then i told her friends i said well we're gonna go because layla is getting ready to go so we had been married, we got in the car. By the time we got to maybe past three red lights, leaving that neighborhood, Mary's cell phone rang, and that was these people saying that Layla was gone. So all of that ties back, I believe, with Layla. When I did the meditation, my spirit guide, Layla. Okay, so, and I, I meet this woman who is dying her name is late so now let me tell you another story this is way i i my kids had to be eight and nine years old we are at the park and they are asking me can they go on a certain swing and i said okay and i'm just i, I wasn't gonna walk far away because i wanted them to keep i want to keep them in my eyesight so I was standing there, but I could still see him. And a gust of wind came, just blew. And it, it just, oh, you know, sometimes the wind will come and give you a chill. And I got this quick chill. And then in a flash, a uh, millisecond, I could see me sitting in my mother's lap. She had on a green seersucker dress. And I'm trying to, I took her breast and I pushed them back in her bra. And the bra was crunchy and hard. And that's the way bras were back in the day. They were all cotton. So I pushed her breast in there and I was fumbling with the buttons, trying to button them. But they were so tiny, I couldn't do it. My mother gently took my hand away and she finished buttoning up the, the, the dress. It was a green seersucker dress. And then, just that quick, I was in another vision, like a flash. And I was in a, a basket of clothes, you know, of clothes sitting there. And it was nighttime. And I could see my mother's shadow on the ground. She was very tall and slim. And I could see her shadow. And then I looked up in the stars. I looked up in the sky and I saw all these stars. And I got so excited. I almost turned over the basket. 
And then my mother took some towels and threw them over my head so I wouldn't get excited. And then she brushed and took me in the house. And at that moment when I saw those stars, I knew in a flash that I felt that I had been tricked. They, they, I wasn't supposed to stay. It was like your parents telling you, well, go stay here at the babysitter and I'll come pick you up this evening. That's some kind of like that. And they tricked me and they never came to get me. And in this vision, I realized that they had, they had fooled me. And I, I cried and I could see myself in, you know, I'm still looking at myself like a uh, bird's eye view, but I'm looking at myself. Uh, a baby, six months, and I say I'm six months old because I was born in March and the way the air felt in that vision, it felt like a September night after you done went through the heat of the summer and all of a sudden things cool off. So I knew it had to be like September, but my my mother just, you know, she was the only person in the house that I liked because she was giving me food. I was a breastfed child. And um, that, that vision was over. So all the next day or so, I was telling my sister about what happened that day. I was at the park with the kids and how these flashes came with the wind. And I told her first about the breastfeeding thing. And she was like, Daddy, you you just tripping it. You didn't that for you to be breastfeeding and you remember it, you had to be almost three years old. So you know about if you ain't breastfed like that, you she was just really disappointed in what I said. I said, Well, I can't help what I saw. I mean, I know. I said, Mama been dead for a long time and daddy, my father was still living, but he wouldn't know how old I was when I quit breastfeeding. So I said, well, don't worry about it. I thought I'd tell you. And they make me think I was going crazy. But um, I'm going to have to give this dog some treats. She just, uh, I don't know if y'all can hear her grunting in the background. Here, girl, take that treat. But anyway, I was telling her that, that I just wanted to talk to somebody about it to make sure I wasn't going crazy. She said, well, that's crazy. That's crazy. And I said, okay. So I didn't even tell her about the second part of the dream, the vision about me looking at the stars. I said, well, she didn't take too kindly with me talking about breastfeeding. I didn't tell the other part. But I did tell it to her uh, maybe a couple of days later, but she wasn't interested at all, so I just cut it short. But a week or so after that, we went down home, same place where we the pain bottom was. And we got there late, but my sister and I, we were walking, and my grandmother, her name is Mary, and I'm named after her. But my grandmother's sister, she was in her 80s, and she was sitting on the porch. She had a bit of dementia, and she was sitting there. She got excited and started screaming. She said, oh, that maid, that maid, that's my sister, that maid. And... Everybody there, the older people, when they saw me, they were telling me how, how much I looked like my grandmother when she was about my age. And I just said, oh, I guess everybody got to look like somebody while I'm wearing her face. But when I got close to my aunt, she was so excited. So I had to tell her who I was. And I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm Mary's granddaughter, your sister's uh, granddaughter. My name is Mary, too. And she said, oh, it's just a bit of, uh, her name is Beta. Her name Beta had a bit of dementia, but I, I, I talked to her and let her, made her realize that I was not her sister. I'm your niece, your sister's granddaughter. So she said, what's your mother's name? I said, my mother is dead, but her name is Ma was Mabel. And she said, oh, Lord, I remember Mabel. And I remember you too. I smiled. She said, Yeah, you was a bitty baby. In my mind, I'm thinking, Bitty, it must be a itty bitty baby. I said, Yeah, 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 you was shown off a bitty baby. So I finally said, Ain't beta. What's a bitty baby? 
He said, that's a baby that sucked his mama's titties a long time. Mabel had, didn't get you weaned till you was almost two and a half years old. I said, oh my God. But my sister was standing there with me. And she was able to see the whole thing unfold. Because when I first told her about the vision that I had of pushing my mother's breast back in her blouse, uh, she said, you'll never know anyway because everybody's dead and daddy don't remember. And I said, I know I'll never remember. But lo and behold, that was Amy Baylor, almost 85 years old, has a bit of dementia. And this woman remembered how old I was when I stopped breastfeeding. Now, isn't that a miracle, don't you think? For her to even remember and for her to be sitting on that porch for me to come up on her and for her to think that I'm her sister. I'll let unfold it just as it should. So, uh, Aunt Vader, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, she had a hard time weaning you. My sister looked at me and I smiled and she said, that, that vision you had has to be true, Mary. I said, yeah, so what do you think about the other part of the vision? She said, if one part is true, the other part got to be true, too. But I don't know how you're going to figure out uh, coming from the stars. I don't figure that out. So we, you know, time passed. We kind of forgot about that. But there's one thing that worries me. But it don't wear me as bad, but I have a longing to find out. It's kind of like I want to know. And and it's like you when you realize you don't belong here. I don't know if it was a mistake or is this a prison planet. It's just like I don't know. So I asked my sister the other day, what should, what can I do? And to my surprise, she has been studying different things that I've studied. And she said, well, why don't you do past life regression? And I said, oh, I hadn't thought about that. I said, but I, I can do past life regression for myself, but if I did it, I, I'm not sure would I be making things up to fit my agenda. And I said, I don't know. Then she said, go to the Akashic Records. And I said, when did you learn about that? She said, girl, I've been studying because I, I know what you got and I want some of that. So I said, okay, the Akashic Records, Akashic Records, I could do that. So I, I kind of made me a little die uh, in a notebook as to what I want to ask. And it comes through with meditation. I have to get my meditation place, space set up. And my friend, he's going to get my uh, Reiki and meditation room fixed up for me next week. And that is what I want to know. And as, not when I find out. I'm not going to just never know but nobody would hardly believe me anyway but this is for my own satisfaction to find out who I am and why I'm here and I know I'm here to learn patience and patience is the key uh, in me finding out my path so uh, I'll, I'll be back and tell you guys how this meditation thing is going but I know Layla, I can, if I, you know, consult Layla, my spiritual guide, and this lady who prayed for me on her deathbed. And I can't say if I can remember somebody praying for me on, my, on their deathbed. I believe my mother prayed for me. But this was a different prayer. This prayer that Layla prayed. Mary told me that it was a personal prayer, and she prayed for me for almost an hour, and then she went into a coma. So this this woman that I never met, I believe that fervent prayer, I'll find some answers through that, and I'm going to go back and, and go to my spiritual corner, and I'm going to let you all know what I find out from the Akashic Records. But I've been on 29, almost 30 minutes. But 
I was just bringing y'all up to a car. But if you go through my old videos, you might find two spirits set on my bed. And I don't think I talk about Layla. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just, you know, trying to bring it up close where you understand where I am. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.